How's it going everybody? My name is Will Robson. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc or on Twitter at Robson Inc. So it has been a very, very long time since I posted a video uh, and I'm going to say that is because I've been extremely busy with finishing up Todd issue 1 which you're seeing the cover of right now, Meta Rising issue 1 which is out now, uh, which I believe you can find at meta-rising.com um, and then also I've had a crazy experience recently with uh, DC Comics where I was almost drawing a Batman book for them so I was very busy doing samples for that. I didn't get it in the end, I, I, uh, some established artist stepped in at the last minute but I was pretty close to getting the job so that was really exciting but now it's back to small press so I'm going to keep keep on trucking. So what I'm doing here is the cover for Todd Issue 1. If you see right there I've got a grid and this is something that I've picked up from uh, cinematography and then reminded to me by Jonathan Rectum from a book called Framed Ink and it's just about composition where if you split up a image into six, no it's nine uh, squares then you can choose where the eye can focus and it's usually where any of the the, the, uh, the lines cross in the corners. Um, so I kind of <laughs> already didn't follow that rule on this but that doesn't matter. So the cover is, uh, we talked about it, he wanted it to be more of like a Scooby-Doo type thing or just like a, uh, for me it felt like a tongue-in-cheek horror type thing and it's got uh, the Grim Reaper standing over the damsel in distress, I'm saying that with my fingers up doing quotation marks, which is Scarlet who's one of the main characters and then Todd helplessly stuck behind a fence. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing. Um, so in this video you just you in this video you're just going to see the rough pencils of what I'm doing um, and this is obviously all digital all done in Manga Studio 5 um, and then the pencils I'm using are Frendon brushes which you can download I think they're only like five or six pounds or something like that and they're really really good they feel extremely traditional to the point where I've had people want me to do commissions and they're like oh yeah just mail me the drawing when you're done I was like no I do everything digitally like I talked to one person I couldn't even believe that um, so I'm just putting in, as you can see there, barcode, price and title, just so that I don't clutter the image too much, so that uh, all that type of important information will take over that space. Uh, so it's good to just keep that in mind when making a comic book cover. So here I'm putting in the little sort of rougher scale, and my pencils have gotten rougher uh, over the past few months because I'm really sort of penciling uh, when I'm in inks, as in I'm figuring a lot of stuff out there. Then you'll see that in future videos of mine. I've got a ton of backed up videos over the months that I just haven't been bothered to edit or post. Uh, but I will be doing that for you guys. Um, and thanks for all the subscribers. I hit over a thousand subscribers. One of my videos of how to uh, find your comic book style, that's got like over 12,000 hits. So thank you very much everybody for, for supporting me on that. I really appreciate it. Okay, so what am I doing now? Uh, oh, I think I'm just ex okay. So I was exporting the file here, which was the rough to send off to the client to see what he thought about it. Um, and then he said he wanted to see what she looked like in a sort of crouched position. Um, so I think I'm doing it here. And I already knew that it, I was not into it at all because it just looked like she was sitting there looking at <laughs> the groom. We were like, "Hi, how's it going?" But um, yeah, I didn't really get the effect out of that. I also say that. If you're watching my videos, you're going to see me post a bunch of videos that are old, and I'm just going to say that my art's gotten a lot better since these old videos, even from this, and this was only done a month ago, because after I did that DC job, I really pushed myself to draw professionally, and I got fantastic feedback from the DC editor, uh, to the point where I, now I've been shortlisted for a future DC project, which is still really exciting. I mean, I didn't get the Batman job, but I'm still definitely going to get something in the DC world, which is awesome. I mean, that's my dream, so that will come true eventually. <laughs> and then they'll be exciting to post a few. And also, so my most popular video as well has been my uh, How to Find Your Comic Book Art Style video. If you want me to do any tutorial videos, just let me know, because I think those are the, the videos that get the most hits and looks and stuff. And honestly, I get a lot of my fan base and readers for my books from things like YouTube, so please keep it up. Uh, so now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing for this Grim Reaper's face. I think in the end I decided just to do his eyes in there. Um, so that you could open the book to see what the Grim Reaper's face looks like. I don't want to re reveal... It's cool, like the Jaws effect. You don't want to just reveal your whole monster at once. You wait until the right time to reveal it. So as you can see there, I sort of just blacked it out and then put little holes in. Which I'll figure out in the inks. And I don't know why, for some reason these pencils here, I started doing some really crap... Uh, 
what's it called, lime weights. Uh, and this whole piece, I think it came out a bit too thick, um, lime weights wise. I think uh, I put a bit too much thick lines in there. And I've made my lines a lot thinner as of recent, because I was studying this artist, um, and I was kind of just inking over his stuff, and I realized how thin his lines are. Um, and that was Greg Capullo. Uh, well, Danny Mickey, really, because he's the inker. And I would suggest to do that sometimes, like just get a page of pencils or something from your favourite artist and just, you know, don't take it seriously, just plop it into Manga Studio, have fun, uh, try and recreate the lines as best as you can and you will learn a lot of stuff just doing that. And also, like, follow all your favourite artists on Twitter because, I mean, Danny Mickey, who's my favourite inker, he posts these incredible pictures that you would never see in a, a comic of, like, the inks for Greg Capullo's Batman right now compared like pencils, inks, colours, like he lays them all out and, and the process of them, so it's really interesting to watch. Uh, here, this is something I completely ignored in the end, which were these chains, I guess I, I think I just completely forgot about them. Like I put the chains around him, but I didn't put the wavy big chains, and I had blood dripping from his, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, scythe, um, but then I sort of got rid of that in the end as well. So as you can see there, I'm putting those form lines around the face, that's just for my mind to see, so I can draw everything um, in a nice perspective um, and keep the forms proper. And you, uh, again, I always flip my image um, just to see if, if it looks good on one side, uh, then it should look good on the other side and you can really get sort of a nice clean sense of form. And you can do this traditionally as well with a mirror, I have a little handheld mirror that I put up to like my commissions that I do, um, and you know, my traditional... Uh, commissions so that that works a lot with that as well she's got this jacket which i absolutely hate which we're changing in issue two because it was just a pain in the ass to draw and it has all these lines on it and it just didn't look good in the end so we're, i'm changing a jacket in issue two and i'm actually working on issue two right now i was trying to film the page i'm doing because the page i'm doing right now looks really cool but for some reason my computer today couldn't handle camtasia recording and me drawing so i don't know what's going on there i gotta fix that otherwise uh it's going to be a problem. I'm also going to do, I think, a video of me doing some of my, one of my traditional commissions as well, because that stuff is super fun, and I got some good feedback on Twitter about those commissions. And if you want to commission me to do any sketches, then you can just message me on my Facebook or on Twitter or anything like that. I'm happy to do stuff like that. And I mean, my traditional commissions are very cheap. Uh, so I made a lying on this bed of skulls. Um, because I just thought it was a cool image of this graveyard filled with skulls, and they're sort of devouring her, and then uh, I don't know, it's just a weird image, but it's uh, it's a fun image. I wanted to do something that would stand out on a, a stand, like if you're walking... Like the comic shop I go to in London, uh, when you walk in, there's just this massive wall of the single issues that are out, and it's really hard to, like... I always try and look for the covers that really just pop out, and sometimes they're the most simple ones, to be honest, but um, anytime I look at like an old Greg Pillow Spawn cover. I think the concept is simple, but the art is super detailed. Like if you look at his Batman stuff now, it's a lot more simpler, and I actually really like that. That's what I try and imitate the most. Um, but simple is very good for covers, uh, says the guy who's just drawing a complicated cover. Uh, so I got this uh, sort of old tree in the background. I learned how to draw trees from looking at Frank Frazetta. Um, he did these Lord of the Rings and Hobbit drawings, and he drew some really cool looking, just. Uh, moldy, well not moldy, but really sort of haggard branches, so that's what I'm going for in that piece, or this piece, or any piece that I draw trees in. So then I uh, I stuck um, lots of tombstones in there, originally it was going to say here lies Scarlet, uh, I forgot her last name, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that when it comes to the inks you just, to be honest you're like I can't be asked to do this, so you just skip it, and sometimes it's for the best and sometimes it's for the worst. And so I got loads of bats in here which actually, even though I drew them in there, I drew uh, this Batman page a while ago, of uh, just for fun of this Batmobile, uh, and I have a bunch of bats in there, and that's the great thing about digital is you can just copy and paste stuff that you've used before, and to be honest I do it a lot, like certain backgrounds, like if I've got a brick wall, there's this one brick wall that I've drawn that I just copy and paste it and I sort of change the perspective of it, uh, and it, it's just a time saver, an absolute time saver, I mean that's the only reason I'm doing digital. Um, it's because of how much time it saves. It lets me make more money. <laughs> and at the end of the day, that's the best. Like, when I was doing that DC thing, the one thing they were impressed by was my turnaround time, because I was giving them a page day, and uh, which I thought was the standard, but maybe that's changed now. I believe it's a page every day and a half to two days. So me giving them a page a day showed that I can do a 22-page book in a month, no problem. 
and that's another thing you got to strive for. I mean, I think this whole cover in, in the end covers always take less time for me because it's just a singular image, but um, in the end, uh, I think it took about six hours, so not that long. That's pretty good. Um, it is sped up here, obviously. The next part will just be the inks. So here's Todd. Uh, I didn't put too much detail into him because I knew he was going to be behind bars and he's going to be so tiny on the page that he doesn't need much detail. Uh, that's one thing about working digital that is a bit of a, uh, a catch-22 is um, sometimes you put a lot of detail on the stuff that's absolutely tiny on the page. You just can't tell because you're working on a tablet. Um, but as you can see there, different layer moving him around trying to get him behind uh, the fence. But I think it's a really cool image. I think it really stands out. Um, and I think the inks do look cool, but um, a bit too thick. Uh, but all in all, I think it's a really interesting looking image. Because I think the scythe sort of that shape of it right there. See, I, I even amplify it. Uh, I think it really sort of brings a, a nice your eye around the piece a bit. So this is another step I sometimes add, where I just put in what I think is going to be the basic shading for inks. I've started to do this in the ink stage now with a different colour because this is a bit too rough as you can see. But it just, I, and then I, if, as you can see, I'm going to put it behind uh, the art layer and lower the opacity uh, and just keep it there as a, hey, while you're inking, keep in mind this is what you're trying to do with the light. So as you can see there, that's, that's what I do. Uh, and it just gets you see what the piece is going to look like in total. So thanks for watching part two. I don't know when it will be up. I'll try and put it up soon. Um, but you can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. Or on Twitter at Robson Inc. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye.